Good evening and welcome to Sunset News this Monday evening. As always, we're bringing news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Diana Master. Let's take a look at the news-making headlines tonight. The Agriculture Ministry has declared the widely sold and advertised boom insecticide illegal, warning the public that the unauthorized selling of the product and that it is not a registered insecticide in Namibia. The Ministry's ex Executive Director Ndia Kupi Nituamata said that the Ministry has noted that the product, also known as Diclovos, is being sold online by retailers and vendors countrywide. It is advertised as being the best at killing cockroaches, flies, mosquitoes, ant boars, snails, weevils red-haired caterpillars, budworms and boil worms. The ministry received reports that this product is being used for domestic purposes, which is hazardous and not recommended for use in Namibia. Nitu Amata said that apart from the fact that this product is hazardous and poses a danger to humans, boom insecticide is not registered for use in Namibia as per the Fertilizers, Farm Seeds, Agricultural Remedies and Stock Remedies Act. The ministry therefore cautioned the public to refrain from purchasing, possessing, using and indoor storage of the boom insecticide. To side. Getting into our next story, established in 1968 by Dr. Abraham Bernard May, the Cancer Association of Namibia celebrates 55 years of fighting cancer this year. As part of its mission to create awareness of and educate on cancer to help prevent, earlier detect and support cancer patients, the organization has a diverse support program structure, ranging from educational campaigns to screening through the National Cancer Outreach Program. Support is also extended to diagnosed patients by providing accommodation at the two interim houses of Can House House Acacia and Chica House for Children Fighting Cancer. The Patient Financial Assistance Program aids vulnerable cancer patients financially to travel to Fintech for treatment and often assists with co-payments, buying out of medicine when the state pharmacies are short or assisting with travel costs should a patient need critical medical care only available in South Africa. Moving right along, the Environment Ministry is currently working on practical and innovative preventative measures against crocodile threats, such as the setting up of crocodile enclosures and water provision to communities. Spokesperson of the Ministry, Romeo Muyunda, said that other measures will include to maximize the benefits of conservation to ensure that the benefits outweigh the costs. This follows after an 11-year-old girl, Matilde Muhuli, was killed by a crocodile in the Nidiona constituency in the Kavango East region recently, while fetching water. The incident occurred at the Shikoro village on 1 April. Muyunda said that ministry has cautioned communities living alongside rivers in the north and northeastern regions of Namibia and the general public not to take risks with their lives. The ministry further urged parents and community leaders living alongside rivers in these in these towns to restrain children from swimming or bathing in these rivers. We cannot afford to lose more people from these dangerous predators, said Muyunda. He said that the ministry understands that communities draw resources from rivers for their livelihoods. However, people must do so safely by taking the necessary precautions at all times. After the break, we get into our community talk segment. Stay tuned. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, oneup2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues. In our community talk segment tonight, the Sisa Namanja Foundation on Friday said that it will be offering financial support to 13 students. Sisa Namanja, the director of the foundation, who is also a lawyer, stated that selecting only 13 individuals from almost 300 applicants was a challenging task. Additionally, the foundation will extend other essential amenities such as food and transportation allowance to selected beneficiaries. This video is by Elizabeth Joseph. 
know how difficult <coughs> sorry, it is to make this selection. As she said, uh, about 300 applications and all of them, I have read some of them, all of them are heartbreaking stories, all of them. And uh, it is quite very difficult to select um, sometimes and may, maybe at some point you will think maybe I can start giving each one a thousand because some of the students simply need tax money. Uh, some of the students don't have food at home when they come back from studies. It's quite difficult and um, I just want to highlight the fact that apart from the donations that we make formally through the foundation, Almost on a daily basis, you get students from NAST, from IUM, from UNAM, and all over the countries, and giving out the smallest you can you can give to all these kids. Um, and of course, there was a requirement that people must be the well-performing students, and uh, we are doing that so that we motivate people that your difficult circumstances must not make it difficult for you to excel. Uh, but our story of the day segment follows up after this short break. NMH at one brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact NMH one at synergy.com.na. NMH at 1, your lunchtime news companion. Now let's get into our story of the day. The Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board on Thursday hosted a media engagement aimed at highlighting the board's activities, challenges and achievements over the past 500 days since its inception. The board's Chief Executive Officer Nangula Wanja had this to say. All the efforts, whether it's actually many other people in the private sector, all the work that we are doing, the result is that the private sector activity account which started to decline. If you see on the left side there, it says uh, in the other investment, portfolio investment, and the total is where the, the red block ends. In 2014, it was just above 100 or 1,000 there. And then you see it has then been going down since 2016. And then you can see 2021, how it's gone up. And now 2022, I think the last quarter, I don't know if it is in here yet, but you can see 13% of GDP in private sector activity account. The colleague uh, at Harvard who did that, they said, Nangola, these figures are just crazy. So they kind of look at it that the private sector confidence. Yes, you will not see it yet today because when the wheel turns, you see the impact later. But that private sector activity is going up. What else do we see? Foreign direct investment is an all-time high. So yes, those are the figures since 2000. And then you can see here, 2015, it was relatively high. And then after that, it was going down and it became negative in 2019. That was before COVID. And then it became negative in 2020. But you can see from 2021, it has increased and 2022 is increased significantly. And yes, most of that one is on the back of mining investment. Most of that is on the back of... Um, uh, uh, oil and gas, but two things are making it work. Number one is private sector confidence, but number two is also improvement in the approval. So for example, home affairs improving their approval for work permits and work visas for people that need to work on the oil rigs of Shell and, and Total Energies has led to the inflow to happen faster and the, the wells to be drilled faster because the people can come and go. So those are some of the things, for example, we worked with Home Affairs on saying, how do we enable the skills that are required to get fast access to Namibia and to make sure that the, the, the visas are approved timely? So that is the impact. Other things that you can see there, a visa for investment uh, process, turnaround, 
used to be around 120 days. We are now between us and Home Affairs working together between 21 days, definitely with the aim to cut it significantly. We cannot do anything without the support of the private sector. We cannot do anything without MSMEs that are energized and taking up anything. We cannot do anything without young people that want to take opportunities. We can start everything. We cannot do it if we don't have that. And therefore, everything that we may have achieved today or we will achieve, it means that the whole of Namibia need to come together. So that is the one thing I want. So whatever story we have told you today is because NIPDB working with somebody, working with somebody, working with somebody, and uh, we made something happen. So that is the first story. The second story is definitely there is an uh, increase in investor confidence. There is more sector diversification and interest in Namibia, which is evident in the pipeline and the reported FDI figures. So yes, investor confidence is increasing. Most, uh, it's more across sectors and not only energy. And definitely uh, we are seeing there that FDI is, has started to pick up and it's no longer at the time. And now what does that mean? Of course, jobs are coming because, yes, it's not today. That one, the figures that are coming, the impact on the economy to happen in a year, in a two. And sometimes you don't see how did we get here? One day we will wake up and it's like, what happened to the unemployment? Where was the inequalities that was here? And then more targeted support offered to scalable MSMEs. New Year focus is startup and HPP. So the, um, the program on the high potential pool. We are going to drive startup and high potential pool because we believe that, yes, we need to touch the lives of a thousand MSMEs, but we need to at least take one by one hand. And those ones that you're taking one by hand, they cannot be a thousand. You need to hold the hand of a few. In economic news after the break, we take a look at Samsung Electronics, which plans to cut memory chip production after estimating a 96% drop in its quarterly operating profit. Ohole So Nice is an entertainment show brought to you by the youth for the youth. This is a dating show that allows individuals to participate and be their own true selves. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. In economic news tonight, Samsung Electronics will cut memory chip production after estimating a 96% drop in its quarterly operating profit. The chip-making giant said sales had dropped sharply due to a slow global economy and less demand after COVID. Samsung said preliminary numbers showed operating profits fell 600 billion Korean won in January to March from 14 trillion Korean won the previous year. The firm's shares rose more than 4% despite the decision to slow chip-making. We are lowering the production of memory chips by a meaningful level, especially that of products with supply secured, the South Korean tech giant said. Demand for memory chips ramped up during COVID-induced lockdowns as consumers bought new electronics to use at home. The industry is now recovering from a chip shortage over the past couple of years, but many semiconductor manufacturers are struggling to find a balance between their inventories and current demand. Now let's take a look at the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at $18.44 to the US dollar and at $20.10 to the euro. It trades at $22.90 to the British pound and two Namibian dollars and 68 cents Bazu one Chinese yuan. Zinc is trading at 2,779 US dollars, while Brent crude oil prices are down by 0.01%, trading at 85 US dollars and 11 cents per barrel. After the break, we get into our international news and tonight we take a look at India hospitals that are on alert as COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the country. My.na Property Show provides viewers with the best in-class content, engaging interviews as well as a showcase of the latest property-related products and services. If you would like to feature your brand, 
or your campaign on this platform, contact my.na at synergy.com.na. My.na properties, more than just a roof over your head. Chill Sessions is an entertainment show that brings you the latest hit, fashion and entertainment news. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact chill at synergy.com.na. Chill Sessions, bringing art and entertainment to the people. Straight Talk is a debate competition for high school learners and a spelling competition for primary school learners, mostly focusing on current affairs among the youth. Contact zone at synergy.com.na to share your products and services. Straight Talk. Don't raise your voice, improve your argument. Starting off our international news this evening, India's health ministry is conducting mock drills to check preparedness of hospitals to deal with rising COVID-19 cases. The drills are being held on Monday and Tuesday across the country. India's active case count is relatively low, but experts are urging caution to stop further spread of the disease. The country saw a deadly second wave in 2021 and the government came under criticism as many hospitals ran out of oxygen and critical care beds. India recorded close to 6,000 new cases on Sunday, government data shows. The active case count was 35,000. The surge in number is largely driven by XBB 1.16, which is an Omicron sub-variant. The WHO has said it was watching the sub-variant and the spread in India. Experts say it's not known to be lethal. It's been in circulation for a few months. We haven't seen a change in severity in individuals or in populations, but that's why we have these systems in place. Maria van Kirkhove, W. WHO's COVID-19 technical lead recently said. Many cities in India have seen a sharp rise in cases in recent weeks, but the surge has not led to an increase in hospital admissions. The last surviving prosecutor from the post-World War II Nuremberg trials has died aged 103. Ben Ferencz was just 27 when he secured the convictions of Nazi officers for war crimes and crimes against humanity. He later advocated for the establishment of an international court to prosecute war crimes, a goal realized in 2002. Ferencz died peacefully in his sleep on Friday evening at an assisted living facility in Boynton Beach, Florida. Confirming his death, the U.S. Holocaust Museum said the world had lost a leader in the quest for justice for victims of genocide. Speaking to the BBC, his son Donald Ferenc, who also works in international law, said he would remember his father as someone who dedicated his life to trying to make it a more humane world under the rule of law. We'll take a quick ad break and return with the weather predictions. Stay tuned. The Regional Review brings you news, views and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at synergy.com.na. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. For tomorrow, partly sunny weather is expected in Inanna at 35 degrees, while sunny weather can be expected in Ruakana at 36 degrees. Sunny weather is expected along the coast with a high of 21 degrees in Valvas Bay and partly cloudy weather in Henty's Bay at 20 degrees. In sports news tonight, this year's edition of the two-day Nedbank Cross-Country Olympic Namibian National Championships races concluded over the weekend with Alex Miller claiming the top spot in the elite men's division. More on this after the break.
The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, oneup2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues. Let's get into our sports news. This year's edition of the two-day Nedbank Cross-Country Olympic Namibian National Championships races, which took place over the Easter weekend in Swakopmund, was a sweeping success. In the elite men's division, Alex Miller took first place with a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 41 seconds. He was followed by Hugo Hahn with a time of 1 hour 27 minutes and 29 seconds, and Xavier Popo, 1 hour 37 minutes and 29 seconds, finished in third place. Monique Duplessis with 1 hour 26 minutes and 9 seconds won the first place in the women's division. She was followed by Nicola Fester with a time of 1 hour 30 minutes and 58 seconds and Zarin Knight with a time of 1 hour 32 minutes and 45 seconds finished in third place. Commerce face, faced the host team Ocho Dundupa region in a scintillating netball final of the Namibian Newspaper Cup. The tournament, which was underway at the Parisa Stadium in Oshuarongo, kicked off on Thursday and came to a close today following a weekend of exciting soccer and netball action. The Newspaper Cup was sponsored by Standard Bank. Closing off our sports stories, backed by a vibrant crowd and loud roars, the men from Botswana defeated Angola 2-0 in an exciting, closely contested final match at the Zone 6 Beach Volleyball Tour at the Mall Beach in Swakopmund. The women's team from Botswana also clinched a victory against Angola 2-1 in an entertaining final match. In the men's category, Angola was awarded a silver medal, while another team from Botswana was awarded a bronze medal. In the women's category, Team Angola won second place and Zimbabwe clinched third place. The three-day competition was hosted by the Namibian Volleyball Federation in conjunction with the Federation Internationale de Volleyball and Confederation of African Volleyball Zone 6. The event saw a total of 31 teams, 14 female and 17 male teams competing from five different countries, namely Namibia, Angola, Botswana, Zimbabwe and South Africa. After the break, we get into the highlights from today's broadcast. Stay tuned. Sport Wrap is a daily show focusing on all sport news and current affairs. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact sportwrap at synergy.com.in. You're watching Sunset News. If you're just joining us, let's take a look at the highlights from today's broadcast. The Cancer Association of Namibia celebrates 55 years of fighting cancer this year. As part of its mission to create awareness of and educate on cancer to help prevent, earlier detect and support cancer patients, the organization has a diverse support program structure. The Sisa Namanje Foundation has announced that it will be offering financial support to 13 students after an overwhelming number of applications received. In sports, the elite men's division, Alex Miller took first place with a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 41 seconds, while Monique Duplessis with a time of 1 hour 26 minutes and 9 seconds won first place in the women's division of this year's two-day Nedbank Cross-Country Olympic Namibian National Championships races. 
And with that, we have come to the end of the broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook and all the NMH platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV Channel 285 and GoTV Channel 94 every weekday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. I am Diana Master, and this has been Sunset News. Don't end your day without us.